Yeah, but Father, we thank you, Father God, that for this day that you have given to us, that all of us can come together, uh, gathered in this place, and to have a hearing of your word. I pray that, Father, that we just want to submit this time to you. May you uh, anoint the speaker lips, and may you grant him the wisdom and the uh, knowledge that comes from you to share to all your children here. And I pray that you will give everyone who come and attend to have an open ear and an open heart as we listen to your ambassador to speak forth on your word. And also pray that you can give us a strong connection on the internet so that there is no interruption and fit the blood of Jesus to cover all of us today. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Genesis 25 So like always, uh, we will do some recap about what we did last week and also to address some questions that were asked. So someone asked about Keturah. All right, whether Keturah was a wife of Abraham or was she a concubine? All right, so where do we get the answers? We get the answers from the Bible. That's the first, the first source. And also we can get answers from historians, all right, like Josephus, and also maybe we have some uh, other extra biblical books, okay, that are recognized. So even from the Bible itself, we can find the answer. Okay, so Abraham took a wife. Her name was Keturah. So, what does really Keturah mean? Keturah means perfume or incense. Alright, so she married Abraham. I mean, Abraham was 137 years old. Yeah, so Abraham had many, many years still in him. Okay, so out of the union with Keturah, so they bore six sons, yeah? So we all see this in verse 2. And she bare him Zimran, Jokshan, Midian, Midian, Ishbak, Shua. And Jokshan begat Sheba and Didan. And the sons of Didan were Ashurim, Latishim, and Luimum. And the sons of Midian, Ephah, Aphar, Hanok, Abida, Elda. All these were the children of Petura. Verse 5, And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac, but unto the sons of the concubines, okay, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son, while he yet lived eastward into the east country. So here, verse 6, it says that the sons of the concubines and we know that okay Abraham had two concubines the first was Hagar and the second was Keturah so from this passage all right we can also <coughs> derive okay that Keturah was another concubine of Abraham okay and um so the evidence says, okay, that she was an Ethiopian woman, all right? So we can go to First Chronicles, First Chronicles 1, 32, all right? And this is just a recap of what I did last week. So, uh, 32, now the sons of Keturah, Abraham's concubine, okay, here it says Abraham's concubine, and she bare Zimran, Jokshan, Midan, Midian, Ishbak, Shuar, and the sons of Jokshan, Sheba, and Eden. Alright, the sons of Midian, Ephah, Ephar, Enoch, Abida, Elda. All these are the sons of Keturah. 34, and Abraham begat Isaac, and the sons of Isaac are Esau and Israel, or Jacob. Alright, the name of Jacob and Israel is used interchangeably, okay, but once it has been established, Jacob was not used anymore. It was used Israel. All right. So Jacob and Israel are the same people. Okay. So I hope okay this answered one of the questions. And another question was uh, 
Judges, yeah, we Judges eight twenty four. Okay, when we talk about that, the Midianites, okay, were also the Ishmaelites, were also the Moabites, yeah, because they had intermarried, yeah, and um, they have a they are a mixed clan. So the first one we saw was there in um, yeah Genesis thirty six, Genesis thirty six. Verse 27, I believe. Okay, so this is a story about Joseph. Okay, we know that Joseph, okay, um, out of the 12 brothers, okay, is one of the one that's favored. Yeah, so all the other brothers did not like him. So they wanted to kill him. Yeah, but Judah, you know, had compassion. All right, <laughs> so you see Judah, yeah. And, and you know what uh, the tribe of Judah is? All right, this where Jesus Okay, Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. So Judah, he had compassion. Compassion, all right, it says, why not, okay, we sell Joseph to the Midianites. Okay, the Midianites, they were merchants, okay, they traveled here and there, they were selling spices and all this, all right, okay, they were merchants, they were merchants, yeah. So, so when these Midianites passed through, so we see here, Okay, we start from 26, yeah? And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it that we say our brothers and conceal his blood? 27. Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. Okay, they said, yeah, this is the better way of disposing him. Then they passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. All right, so we see here that Ishmaelites in verse twenty-seven and verse twenty-eight. Okay, is used Midianites, so they are used interchangeably. All right, so the second passage we we'll look into Judges. Judges 8.24 So, we know, okay, from history, Gideon is the one that defeated the Midianites. So, this is a story about Gideon having after defeated the Midianites. So, verse 24, And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you that you would give me every man the earrings of his prey, for they had golden earrings, because they were Ishmaelites. So here we see again, okay, that the Midianites are also connected with Midianites. Verse 25, and they answered, and will willingly give them, and they spread a garment, and cast all, every man, their earrings of their prey. And the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, beside ornaments, collars, and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian, and beside the chains that were upon the camel's necks. All right, and we also established okay, they are very rich, they are merchants, okay, they had a lot of gold. Yeah, and even the camels, okay, wear gold necklaces. And we alluded to say that today, okay, we can see this reflected in the UAE, United Arab Emirates, yeah, where we see the city of Dubai. They are plentifully rich, okay, all right, they are merchants, right, okay, so. That was what we did last week. Okay. I only added in because there are certain things, okay, that were asked that were not answered. Okay, now going back to Sons of Keturah, we did not go uh, quite in depth. So maybe today we can go because uh, there is a reason why we're going into that because we will see today's incidents. Is always related to 
what we find in the Bible. And the Bible has all the answers. The Bible is the only book that you can find truth in it. Okay? There's no adultery truth. There's no watered down truth. Okay? It is the pure truth. And many have ascertained, alright, the evidence of the Bible is the book of truth. Scientists, the archaeologists, med doctors, a lot, even historians, that wanted to prove the Bible wrong, okay, in the end became Christians themselves, <laughs> after having read and studied, yeah, and valued the Bible for, yeah, for its truth in what is being seen today, being unfolding in our earth today. So you see, sons of Keturah. So the first one is Zimran, right? So where Zimran settled? Because Zimran settled in the West Arabian coast, and uh, Dokshan, he settled in Southern Arabia, Median in uh, Southern Arabia as well, the eastern part of the shore. We have Median, which is the largest of one of the sons of tribes. They are in the north, the west, yeah, of uh, Saudi Arabia, and also south of Sinai. What about no, Ishbak? Yeah, they located in southern Jordan. Okay, and they are the part of the Edomites. Yeah, well, we will later study this. And uh, Shua. Right, Shua, they settled in the Syria Arabian Desert. Right, so out of the sons of Midian, we have Ephraim, Ephraim, Anok, Abida, Elda. All these are the children of Keturah. Okay, now we just want to hone into Sheba and Diden. Dokshan. We get Sheba and Diden. Okay, Sheba and Diden. Okay, they were located in the southwest of Arabia. All right. Uh, today we call Saudi Arabia. Okay. Now, why is it that um, we are looking to Sheba and Diden? Because Sheba and Diden, all right, can be found in Ezekiel thirty-eight. So we know what Ezekiel 38 comprises of, right? It talks about what? It talks about the battle of God and Magog. Alright? Or the oncoming battle. Okay, so let's go to Ezekiel 38. Anyone there? Ezekiel 38, verse 13. Sorry. Can someone read if you found it? Verse 13 is it? Yes. Sheba and Didan and the merchants of Tashish with all its villages will say to you, Have you come to capture spoils? Have you assembled your continent to seize plunder? To carry away silver and gold? to take away livestock and goods, to capture great spoils. Alright, so I'll continue verse 14. Huh? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto God, Thus save the Lord God. In that day, when my people of Israel dwell safely, shall thou not know it? And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses and great company and a mighty army and thou shalt come out about my people israel as a cloud to cover the land it shall be in lesser days and i will bring you against my land that the heathen may know me when i shall be sanctified in thee o god before they arise okay so we see that okay sheba and Diden. okay how do they play into this battle yeah all right are they together with the confederate of Gog? 
you know. Shiba and Gidan are not, all right. They are the one, okay, that will stand with Israel. Okay, they will stand with Israel. Okay, like I said, Shiba and and, and Gidan, all right. They are modern Saudi Arabia, all right. And what about Tashis? Tashis is mostly um, Spain, yeah, modern day Spain, yeah. So now, as we unfold the mysteries of Ezekiel thirty-eight, and we place it together in the Abraham Accord. Okay, all of you know about Abraham Accord, right? Abraham Accord is a peace treaty, okay, signed, okay, by the East, the Muslim nation that they want to have some kind of uh, peace with Israel. Now, this is not a two-state solution, yeah, okay, but it will become a two-state solution, all right, with um, UAE. Okay, UAE, Bahrain, all right, the latest is Morocco and Sudan. So when was this Abraham Accord signed? It was signed 2020, yeah, 2020, right? So we saw that, okay, from that accord, okay, those Muslim countries or Arabic countries, Arabic nations, okay, that signed the treaty, all right, with Israel, they prospered. They prospered. Okay. So we know that Dubai had a lot of uh, tourists coming in. All right, and then they begin to be open, and there were many trades. Okay, between other countries, and most importantly, the sanctions on these countries were lifted. So once the sanctions were lifted, okay, there were trades coming in, and the countries begin to prosper. All right. So Abraham Accord initially was signed by Israel, UAE, and only these two. And on the day that it was about to sign, okay, another one chipped in, in Bahrain. So this really bothered, okay, the I would say the Orthodox Muslims, okay, that wanted to have a caliphate state, right? I says, what are my brothers doing? You know, so they are very, very incensed, very, very angry, yeah, with this. Israel managed to really give them lots of lots of uh, goodies, you know, when they do trips with them. And on top of that, U.S. came in and also supported them in their military. All right, so they had a lot of things. They had money trades. They also had military power. So why not? Okay, so Bahrain came in, and then Morocco. All right, some Gulf nations, and Sudan. Now we are nearing 2023, and we know that, okay, in October 7, something bad really happened, okay? Yeah, we saw Hamas launch an attack on Israel, okay, on their highest day, right, where everyone was still enjoying, it was their Sabbath, they launched an attack. So, if you understand... From the point of history and from biblical historical facts, we see that Hamas okay was desperate because more and more nations, Arabic nations, were gonna sign okay into the Abrahamic Accord. And the latest okay that was gonna join was Saudi Arabia. Now, this really made them very, very frenzied. It says, what is going to be our mission now? 
if our brothers, okay, will align to the enemy, okay, so they had no choice. They had to pull back the confidence of the people. The people were getting weak. They saw that there was no way that they could win Israel. They knew, okay, that, okay, when this agreement accord, okay, be signed, it will come on to the signing of a peace treaty. And they had no choice. How, how small they are, how insignificant they are. Hamas was not really a threat uh, to Israel because they were quite small. All right, they were just doing some kind of guerrilla attacks, okay, at the border of Israel. Nothing, nothing really very, very um, damaging, okay, to the point that Israel dismissed them as a threat, okay. Uh, that was one of the miscalculations, okay, that Israel did. Yeah, so they did not know, okay, that Hamas was planning such a long-term attack yeah of course together with Iran okay backing them up all right so they knew okay that they had to strike because the other brothers okay were no more brothers anymore they were aligning with the enemy so Israel all along okay was small concentrated on Iran Hezbollah because Hezbollah has atomic power, okay, they can launch missiles and really, you know, create great damage. But not Hamas. So Hamas did something, okay, unexpected that no one really um, thought it would happen. But it happened. Why? Like I said, okay, because Saudi Arabia was going to sign all right, they were having discussions, very good discussions. All right, many months have passed. Okay, US was there to be the broker. Yeah, so they were doing very well. And word got to Hamas, okay, that Saudi was going to sign. And before Saudi signed, okay, to enter into Abraham Accord, they attacked. All these. This came to show us, okay, that the Bible is truth. And the Bible will, will continue to play out what is written in the Bible as fulfilled prophecies to come. All right? Okay? It's a very simple understanding because their fellow brothers, Hamas, okay, were terrified. All right? And they wanted to get back the support of their Muslim brotherhood, which they were losing. So in here, they said, okay, no matter what, okay, we're going to launch this attack, okay, and we're going to try to play it, okay, that, okay, it was not them, okay, but there was a retaliating, okay, that Israel was attacking them. And we saw, okay, um, even the interviews of the terrorists, okay, they said that, okay, Israel was the one that attacked them. So I do not know whether they watch news, cable news, whatever, right? Okay, but they were outright wrong. Yeah, and we know, okay, that okay, it was Hamas that okay that launched the attack. Yeah. So anyway, whenever the interviews were done, okay, they did not, they evaded the question, okay, whether it was um, right for them to attack. Okay, they will just go back to history. Okay, so that being said, hopefully, okay, you guys. Um, understand okay why okay the bible does write about the genealogy of abraham okay the son that he bore with sarah the son he bore with petura and the son he bore with ishmael okay that being said yeah i just want to add something beautiful in all this because we know that okay there will be war and ongoing war. All right. So bear in mind, okay, the the names of these children of Abraham. Okay, let's go to Isaiah sixty. Isaiah sixty. Yeah. Okay, we know that this is what the kingdom looks like. Am I right? This is the 
millennial kingdom. All right. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Risen upon whom? Risen upon Jerusalem. All right. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, the gross darkness of the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon the earth. And the Gentiles shall come to the light, and kings and brightness of thy rising. Okay, so we know that okay, there will be this war. Alright? And then after that, okay, Jesus comes and establishes the kingdom. Okay, let me backtrack. Yeah, I just forgot to okay, about Hamas. Okay, I think many of you would have uh, heard, okay, Hamas is in the Bible. And, uh, but some of the things, okay, that are circulating in the internet about Hamas is not really very accurate. Alright? Even the rabbis got it wrong. Okay, I'm not saying anything, right? I, uh, I, I do hear, okay, some rabbis saying all this, right? But, when I look into the original language, right, Hamas was not in that passage. Okay, where was Hamas found? All right. Anyway, because I'm using a King James version, so I do not know okay where they got that Hamas in other passage of the Bible. All right. So the first Hamas I found, okay, from the King James translation, is in Genesis six, Genesis six, verse eleven. And the earth was corrupt before God, and earth was filled with violence. They were filled with Hamas. Okay, this is one of it. Secondly, the second violence, okay, the second Hamas I found in the book of Genesis, okay, is when Sarah was despised by Hagar. Okay, so we find this in chapter 16, verse 4. And Abraham went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai said unto Abraham, My wrong be upon thee. Okay, here the wrong here is, okay, the same word Hamas, all right? It says, my Hamas be upon thee, for I have given my mate unto your bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes, the Lord judged before you and me. So this is the second word, all right, Hamas, found in the Bible. Okay, there are a lot you guys can, you have the um, concordance, okay, you can, can type the word violence, type Hamas in, and you can find. Alright, but nowhere can I find Hamas, alright, in Genesis chapter 1. Okay, I am a, I consider myself really wanting to go into the truth of God. And I don't simply receive what is being circulated online. I will go my very best, okay, to research again what is written and what is being uh, purported as truth. Uh, that's what I do. I do the, I be a Barian. All right, we try to be Barians, not just to listen. Okay, but to take what we listen, filter it through the Word of God, and find the deeper truth. Okay, so um, I can't find Hamas in Genesis 1, okay, where they said, okay, there was violence, okay, before earth was created. You know, if I could find it, then my theology about the gap theory, okay, will change. Okay, yeah. So, when we look into, now we go back to Isaiah 60, yeah? Now, so Isaiah 60, okay, when we see this, right, okay, that also repudiates 
replacement technology. So we see, okay, arise, shine, for thy light is come upon, the glory of the Lord is upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, the gross darkness the people, and the Lord shall arise upon thee, and the glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Like, lift up thine eyes around about thee, and see all they gather themselves. They come to thee, thy sons shall come from afar, thy daughters shall be nursed by your side. Okay? So first we see what the Gentiles coming to, to the light. Alright? They are coming back to worship God. Right? In the city of Jerusalem. And we see, you okay, what? You see, your sons and your daughters shall come from afar. Okay? Your daughters shall be nursed by your side. So we see here Gentiles coming in and we see sons and daughters. So, what does it depict? Are the Gentiles not the sons and daughters? Because right now, okay, we are in the Millennium Kingdom. Right? We know that okay, by faith, when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, we are also sons and daughters of Abraham. That's why, okay, we have the blessings of Abraham. So here the Gentiles is talking about the times of the Gentiles. The Bible says that when the times of Gentiles are up, yeah, that's when, all right, the wrath of God comes in. So here we see Gentiles and we also see sons and daughters, okay? Meaning what, okay? The Jews that were exiled from all over, they will also come back to Jerusalem, okay? Also, another picture of um, Ezekiel 18. I'm not sure, okay, about the dry bones. Yeah. I uh, just remember not going there. Verse 5. Thou shalt see and flow together. Thine heart shall fear, be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted to thee, and the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Wow. This is... The people will be like a sea thronging Jerusalem. The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Median and Ephah. Alright? So see the word Median? See the word Ephah? Alright. Who are they? All they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold. In sense, they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Okay, so we know, okay, Median, okay, Sheba. They are sons of Keturah. So, it doesn't mean, okay, that uh, when God does not favor, okay, a tribe, Okay, they are forever lost or they are deemed forever condemned. No. Alright, okay. God's, God's grace and favor is upon all the earth. Alright. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together into thee, the rams of Nebaoth. Alright. Remember Nebaoth? Alright. Is in Genesis 25. Sons of Keturah shall minister to thee. They shall come up the acceptance of my altar. It will glorify the house of thy glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud and are the doves to the windows? Surely the owls shall wait for me and the sheep of Tarshish shall come first. Okay, so we see Tarshish coming in. All right. We saw this in, which verse was that just now? I saw Shiba Didan. Oh yeah, Ezekiel, right? Ezekiel 8, 38, 13. Okay? The ship of Tarshish comes in to bring thy sons from far. Their silver, their gold with them unto the name of the Lord and unto the Holy One of Israel because he has glorified thee. 
and the sons of strangers shall build up their walls, and their king shall minister unto you. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. So we saw that, okay, Jerusalem, Israel went through a lot of uh, people conquering them. Okay? It's like in the book of Hebrews 12, when God says to earth, yeah, that if, let's say, we are his children, then we should receive discipline. We, we do not receive discipline, okay? We are illegitimate child. So what is illegitimate, okay? Not born of the Spirit, yeah? Not born of the will of God. Not born of the true genealogy, okay, where Christ comes from, okay. So if, let's say, we do not want to receive discipline, okay, God says to us, yeah, it's better that now we be illegitimate children if we do not want to receive discipline from Him. So Jerusalem, being the beloved, the apple of God's eye, are also being disciplined. But in the discipline, all right, God also has mercy. So we see here that, okay, in the end, it is still good. All things work together for those who love the Lord. Whether it be good, whether it be bad, is because of the grace of God, the mercies of God, the compassion of God, okay, we will still receive what rightly belongs to us. Amen? Surely the owls shall wait for me, the sheep of Tashis first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver, their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, unto the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified thee. And the sons of strangers shall build up walls, their king shall minister unto thee, for in thy wrath, in my wrath, I smote you, but in my favor, I've had mercy on you. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day and night. Men shall bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, that they, their kings, may be brought forth. For nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So those who are still against God, against Israel, all right, they will be perished. Verse 12, For the nation and the kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall utterly be wasted. So even uh, from a biblical historical facts, right, we know that the Philistines were very, very against the Israelites. They were the perpetual enemies of Israel. But today we cannot find the Philistines anymore. Okay, they were utterly destroyed. Yeah, by King David. Yeah, and his uh, army. Gone. And I believe, okay, there are a lot of civilizations, okay, that came against Israel. Today they are no more. Verse 13, And the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. Look, Lebanon will come to Jerusalem. The fir tree, the pine tree, the box, to beautify the place of thy sanctuary. I will make the place of thy feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. Alright, so here in okay, bending means they bow. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion, of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. Okay? You shall also suck the milk of the Gentiles. You shall suck the breast of the kings. You shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of 
Jacob. Okay, the mighty one of Israel. For brass I will bring gold, for iron I will bring silver, for wood brass and stones, iron. I will make thy officers peace and thy exactors of righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Amas shall no more be heard in thy hand. So, here we see that okay, Hamas okay, will, okay, the organization, okay, will no more be heard. Wasting and destruction within your borders. Okay, we know that Hamas has always been trying to cause violence, okay, at the borders of Israel. It's no more. He says, salvation and thy gates praise. So out of these walls, okay, will become gates of praise, gates of salvation. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be your everlasting light. The light of the days of thy morning shall be ended. Today, we know that Israel is still mourning. All right, they are being subjected to so many attacks. All right, people who do not like the Jews. Okay, anti-Semitism is on the rise. We can see all over the globe. All right, people are condemning Israel. I think some Christians are also condemning Israel. Okay, let me put this fact straight, yeah? The Israel that we see today, okay, is not the Israel, okay, that God wants, all right? It's not the ones, okay, that's been purified, okay? It has to go through processes and processes. Because why? They have not come to the light. They are still in darkness. They have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They have not accepted Jesus as the anointed Messiah. They have best bypassed it, all right? They have created, okay, excuses for them not to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They say that there will be two messiahs. Even let's say they believe, okay, Jesus was a messiah, but he was not the one. I don't know how they come about it. All right, so they are waiting for another one, okay, which will sit in the third temple, all right, which they think is the correct messiah. They know. The scriptures, they know. But somehow, they are blinded or they are stubborn. They do not want to receive the truth. So they are waiting for another Messiah, okay, which we know is the Antichrist. And when the Antichrist sits on that throne, okay, in the temple of Jerusalem, all right, there will be peace. All right, for the first three years, three and a half years, and the next three and a half years, then okay, they will see the horns coming out. They will see okay, they will be being persecuted, and they have they have to run. And when Jesus appears to save them, then they will cry out, "Blessed be the name of the Lord." They will mourn. And they repent that truly they have crucified their Lord, the Messiah, Jesus Christ. But they will go through the tribulation. But we also have to thank the Jews for being blinding, for being stubborn, so that we, the Gentiles, the wow, all is can be grafted to the true vine. If not, we too do not have salvation. So we also have to give thanks, okay, to the Jews. No matter how cruel they are, okay, whatever things they do, okay, they are still secular Jews. Today we see the Jews on the news, they are political Jews. 
all right, but also in the hands of God. Yeah, God putting things in place. Okay, for the consummation of the kingdom of God. So whenever we see news, that is, let it be balanced, okay, with the word of God. What we need to do when we see this, how we pray, how we look at this situation, we know that everything is by the will of God. It happens not by chance. It happens because of prophecy. For prophecy must be fulfilled so that Jesus Christ will come. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither by brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, thy God, thy glory. The sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, the days of the morning shall be ended. Thy people shall also be all righteous, they shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may glorify. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will keep quicken it in his time. So if you want to know more about the Millennium Kingdom, yeah, go and do your own um, you know, uh, study, research. Yeah, you can find it yeah, uh, in the book of Revelation. Also in Isaiah later on. Now okay, we don't have time for all this. Okay, so what I'm trying to say, okay, that God loves all his children. Is the only ones okay that disobey, okay, that will receive the wrath of God. Yeah. Even as God has uh, created so many nations, so many tribes. You look at Isaiah 16. They still come. They are into the salvation grace of God. We see Midian, we see Kedar, we see Sheba, we see Tashish. Okay. All these Nebaioth, sons of Abraham, but they were the ones not picked okay, to receive the promise. The one that received the promise is Isaac. So, we really need the Holy Spirit to give us a further understanding okay, of God's doing in our life, okay, in the lives of nations. We will never be able to come to that exact understanding still we meet Jesus face to face, where all things that are now blur, all right, like in a glass, will become clear when He comes, when He becomes truly, okay, our wisdom, okay, our knowledge, our righteousness, everything complete, full, in glorious, what we are having now is just a glimpse okay so we need to thank okay actually our brethren the Jews okay for being blinded yeah uh, so that okay we the Gentiles which really have no business okay to be part of Israel okay we because of the grace of God we are allowed all right this grace to be grafted to the true vine okay to Christ which is the true vine all right and uh, able to be part of him to partake of his goodness to bear fruit for him yeah but when our times are up the times of the Gentiles are up right then God will again okay um, revive and uh, remove the blindness from Israel and they shall see that indeed it is Jesus that they have crucified and um, it was the Messiah that had come 
that had paid so cruelly in their hands, being crucified, now being stripped of all dignity, of all honor. But Jesus did all that so that he can redeem actually to redeem us, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus died a shameful death for us because Christ loved us so much. Like I said, we have no business to be part of Israel. We have no business we are adopted into Him. He giving us a chance. So we need to be thankful for what God has given to us. Amen. Hallelujah. So again, like I said earlier, okay, we need to rightly divide the word. Okay? We must rightly divide the news that we see and how we are to react all right and let us be vessels of righteousness vessels of truth not being swayed by the deceit of men or propaganda of men okay uh i mentioned Okay, the Israel that we see is still a secular Israel. One that is blind to the truth. One who is still battling in the flesh like you and I. They do not have the Holy Spirit. Right? So we are better off than them. So we, the one who are better off, who are stronger, we must continue to pray for them. We must continue to pray for all the sons okay, of Abraham because God, the Lord, sent his son to die for everyone. Everyone. So if we persist in our prayer, intercession, pray yeah, for our Muslim brothers and sisters, pray for them, especially the ones, okay, that are so convinced, okay, that they have the truth. And their truth entails killing people who do not conform to their religion. We hope that there will be Pauls coming out of these souls, okay, from this uh, Muslim religion. Right? So, uh, thank you so much. I'll just uh, say a short prayer and I'll be in here. Yeah, Father, we thank you. We praise you for this day, this wonderful morning okay, that you have prepared for us. Lord, we know that, Lord, <coughs> um, every word, every jot, every title of the word, will not be erased until heaven and death so we can come. Lord, we know, Father God, whether it be the Old Testament, whether it be the New Testament, right, all is truth. Father, give us the wisdom, Lord, to rightly divide truth, to understand what your word says in these times and how it can apply to us, Lord, in modern days of God. And Lord, let us not apply things of it that are outdated, okay, into what we have today. Let us not want to stay in the old wine and not receive the new wine of God. Oh, let us, Father, have a, a new wine skin so that we can receive the new wine of God. Oh, Father, I pray, let your truth fully engulf us, of God. That Lord, we just want to be in your truth day and night. That Lord, we will not be 
confounded by the lies of the devil, Lord God. And Lord, even when the devil comes to try to confuse us, Lord, with、uh, doubts, with lies, Your Holy Spirit is will stir in us to tell us that this is deception that we must not fall to, Lord. Father, we thank you, we praise you, even Lord, for the sons of Abraham. Lord, we pray, and Lord, your blessing be continued upon them, O Father. O Lord, we bless them, O Father. Yes, Lord, we not only bless the children of Israel, O Father, Lord, we bless even Lord all the children of Abraham. Yes, Lord, the sons of、uh, the Torah, Lord, sons of Ishmael, O God, Lord, we bless. Lord, even as you say, bless your enemies, Father. We shall bless because this is your commandment. And Father, I pray that the days to come, Father, Lord, that we, your church, Lord, will not be too hurry to come to conclusions, too hurry, Lord, to fall into fearful doubts, Father. And Lord, let us wait in patience. Let us have the clarity of what's coming next, Father. Give us the peace so that we will walk, yes, Lord. And do things according to your will, to your purpose, O Father. That we will not walk for you, nor will we follow behind, but we will walk together with you, as a son walks together with the Father, even as we are now, your sons and daughters, O Father. Grab us by the hand, O Father. Hold us by the hand. Teach us your ways. Let us follow in your footsteps. We ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.